feel like this is boyfriend tag part two. <laughs> um, we're doing a Q&A. I had you guys ask questions on my Instagram. About 95% of those questions had to do with marriage and Cameron. So I thought that I'd have Cameron here with me while I answer some of these questions. I made a video about relationships a while ago before I got married um, and I got a really good response on that. People really liked it. Um, so I thought that since we are approaching our one year anniversary, we would do kind of like a you know, Q&A, answer some questions. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, so this is probably like the number one question and I, I don't even know why people keep asking it because I feel like I've answered it so many times. When do we plan on having kids? Do we want kids? How many kids do we want? Okay. Yes, we plan on having kids. I love kids. He does we love, love kids. kids. He actually is way better with kids than I am, which is really funny because they just run to him like they love kids. Him. Love Cam. Cam kids love, love the kids. Cam love the kids. We definitely, we definitely want kids. Um, I think any healthy Christian marriage wants kids because it's part of our reasonable service to have children. If you know what the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. So um, you're gonna preach in this video. I feel like he's gonna preach. I just want to <laughs> help somebody. You know. I don't. I'm but yes, we def Go we're definitely gonna have kids. Um, right now. Whenever, whenever God says that the time is here for us to have children, then we will. We, we're not, we have a plan, but I mean, it's not really like a, we're not having kids until right. this or that. Because I don't, I mean, my family is more important than anything in the world. Uh, I'm not going to put anything on the back burner for my children. I've always said that three is the magic number. I just like three, and that's only because I grew up with two brothers, so... You know, three seems like a good. At first, Cameron was like, "Let's have eight. It was definitely five. I don't want to know where. Five sounds like eight when you're the person who has to push them out. So I was like, "No, three. It's definitely more than two. I can have quadruples. I feel like we're gonna have two boys and a girl. Okay, I can I can work with that. That's what I feel. It's just all, all right. Here. I feel like I'm so far away. I'm close. You can be close too. What was it like growing up a PK? We can both answer this because we're both PKs. This is not being cocky, this is not being braggadocious or vain or anything like that, but it's a lot like being a celebrity. You it know, really is though, in not a good way. You have to be perfect, like you can do no wrong. If you do something wrong, then you know, it's like, ooh, it's like a big deal. They kind of like, they, they gossip about it and like everything you do is put on a pedestal. I mean, it's really not fair. Uh, how PKs get treated, and then there's there's the negative connotation to a PK. It's like, oh, you a PK, you bad, or oh, I, right. oh, like, you church a kids PK. are bad, all church like, kids no. are bad. And then everybody says, oh, Christians are so judgmental, but other people are judgmental towards Christians being judgmental. So exactly, you have to be uh, judgmental. You can't say, oh, know that you're a PK. Judgmental. You automatically, oh, I know what that means. No, you don't. Oh, right. you're a PK. Your dad keeps all the money from the collective plate. No, he doesn't. The ministry has to run, like bills have to be paid, so on and so forth. So, right. I think it, I think it's funny because like he did the same thing that people had been doing to me all my life. Like he judged me for being a preacher's kid, and he's a preacher's kid. Remember when we first started talking, you didn't want to talk to me because he thought we weren't going to be able to do nothing. Like we were going, like I was going to be boring, like I was going to be lame. And it's just like, but you're a PK too, so you should understand out of all people. He probably felt the same way that I did. Like my whole life, I didn't want to date a PK. I didn't want to marry one. I think for a long time, we were both trying to fight who we were. Being a PK is actually what got us together. We, we understand, we get it. The older you get, the more yeah, you understand it. the older you get, the more you understand it, and then the more you can like- And learn how to deal with live it. Live through it. Right. What kind of work do you do and What's it like when your husband is at work? Cameron works for Corporate America. Um, he's also a photographer and a musician and a lot of other things. But primarily, that's his job. I guess people want to know like what it's like for me to be a housewife, I guess. I consider myself to have a job because I do do a lot of work with YouTube. So I'm not just sitting around being idle all day. <laughs> like When he's at work, he leaves in the morning and I pretty much, I answer emails, I plan out 
what videos I'm going to do, edit. And if I don't have anything to edit, I'll film. And if I don't have anything to film, I'm probably cleaning up something or going to the store to get food. Um, but it's just like a balance of taking care of the house and him and taking care of my YouTube channels. And that, that takes all day and I run out of time to do stuff like because it's actually a lot of work. Did you and Cameron ever break up? No. We don't fight. We didn't fight at all when we were dating. Like at all. We didn't even really fight now. I don't ever yell at him. He doesn't ever yell at me. We don't, we don't do that. I don't think that's very productive. Arguments really don't work for me. We don't if do arguments you, as well. If you trying to argue with me. He'll stop and he'll give up. He's like, okay. I know me. Okay. I know me. If you know that you have something inside of you that you never want your wife to see unless you guys are in danger, I think it's best that you shouldn't really argue. She's little and... <laughs> and what does me know, being little have to do with it? I don't, I don't curse at her ever. No, she doesn't curse at me. We don't ever call don't each other out of each other's that names. Disrespect? I don't do disrespect. I told her when we were dating, like, look, don't ever cuss at me. I don't even like when girls cuss, period. But don't cuss at me. Don't ever call me something disrespectful. That's just going to take me to a level that you don't want to be. I don't see the point because you say things you don't mean and they stick with you forever. Like, if we have a disagreement, we disagree. You know, I'll state my case and then, you know. I'll just be quiet. I'm I'm quiet when I'm not happy. So I just I'll just sit there and be like, okay, you know, we'll figure it out. But we ain't gonna yell at each other. This might seem cliche, but we don't go to bed mad at each other. No, That's so dumb. Actually, I'm gonna make a confession. I went to bed mad she, at you she a couple to, times. She went to bed. I mad tried at me a couple it. Times, I tried it, and it sucks. And, and she's the one who don't came up with the rule. Do and it. She's the one. I know who was to because be people mad told me. me, but I didn't know that it would actually be like a real problem. It's so bad. <laughs> Just spit it out, get it over with. It's so bad, because I don't like to talk about stuff. But man, I went to bed with that one time. I stayed up the whole night. Like, I could not sleep at all. And then he was just sleeping, and I was just like, this nigga just, just sleep. sleep. I mean, just good sleep, too. And I'm like, man, this really sucks. Like, And then it just kept building, and I just kept being mad for no... Everything was making me mad at that point. It was just like, this is so stupid. All I had to do was say something that day. Life lessons, folks. Life lessons. <laughs> you live and you learn. People always email me and stuff about long distance relationships. So I guess they want to know how did we get through it? How do you stay positive? All that good stuff. Um, communication. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like nobody's business. <laughs> like... And there's so many ways you can communicate nowadays to where there's no it's excuse. It's not even, like, there's, there's, no there's more There's more now than when we were dating. Like, yeah, it now is. Now you can really. Snapchat, there's Instagram, no, DM. There's no excuse. Like, none. People be like, oh, I just don't have time. I don't have, no. You, if you have time to tweet, you have time to send a text. If you have time to make an Instagram post, you can send a Snapchat. Like, you, there are no excuses for long distance relationships nowadays. You can do it, like. Trust me. All you have to do is communicate. You have to be able to trust that person. I say well, if you're in a long distance relationship, you really have to love them. Like, like really. You do. I have to grow to love Cameron. But I didn't start dating him until I knew that I, like, loved him. Like, because I wasn't going to be playing around with somebody like that from that far away. Just make sure that what you have is genuine. And if you know it's genuine, put all your faith in that. I mean, that, I mean there's nothing else that you can really say because it's going gonna, it's gonna to suck. Long distance sucks no matter what. I was just telling this girl that the other day. Long distance is gonna suck, but it makes you stronger, and I think it really helped us before we got married. Cause I mean, there would probably be a lot of things we wouldn't be able to work through if we didn't know how to communicate. Would you consider you and Cameron to be two entirely different people? And if so, how do you make it work? Yes, we're two different people. Anybody who gets married, they're two different people. They're it's two people from two different worlds. There's balance, right? So balance. I guess I'm more charismatic. Mm -hmm. in real life mm -hmm. and Vicky is more charismatic towards the camera I'm more outgoing he's a people person she likes to be in the house all day I, do. I don't understand it when she stays in the house all day it gets on my nerves like <laughs> I be trying to but do I could a, literally, her a favor I can stay in the house all day like I don't have to talk to anybody all day but yeah, we are different. We're a lot different and I didn't realize how different we actually were until we got married I'm like an analyzer you know, I like to analyze things and observe things and I can make plans. I like to make plans. He, he's a more spontaneous person. He likes to experiment um, and he's good with, you know, being in an experimental field. 
Whereas me, I have to plan things out. I like to have everything, you know, in line. And sometimes that does kind of clash with us because, you know, if we want to go somewhere or something, he's just like, oh, we'll just wing it. And I'm like, no, no, we need a plan so everything goes smoothly. Because if it doesn't go the way that I like, I get upset. I mean, you have to learn how to work through those things. That's the beauty of marriage, is that you learn how to work through things with somebody that is not like you. That's why so many marriages don't work nowadays, because people are so selfish that they don't want to deal with other people and how they operate. Like, well, who told you that everybody's going to be just like you and think just like you and know how you think? Like, you have to do that with everyone. At the core, we share a lot of the same things, mm -hmm. like values and... Right, like, we have the same morals, family, we have the same beliefs, morals. and that's really important. Like, if, I mean, if you are that different than somebody else, you might want to take a step back and analyze the situation, because... If y'all don't have the same morals, then there will be some internal conflicts. One of you won't understand why the other does things that aren't appropriate. You know, that, that kind of stuff, that, that can be a problem. And that's when you need to be like, okay, maybe this person isn't for me. Before you get married, you need to determine those things. So. Okay, let's just answer it all. Look, I mean, come on. Well, because some of them I wanted to say for my own personal can you, channel. Can you come me. to Houston? <laughs> that's to take up time. Yeah, she can come. Um, where, where do you, see, you see yourself in five years, babe? In five years, I see myself uh, working uh, full-time ministry. Um, my job, if you're watching, sorry. Um, we'll have a home and a child. And um, I will have an album out by then. Oh, Lord, and an album? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. A uh, what? Yeah, we're, we're like in this thing. Financially very stable, uh, no debt. Well, actually, maybe that that might be hard, but you never know. God can do anything. Uh, oh, same. I don't have career goals. People always ask me, "What are my career goals?" I don't have any. I mean, I'm I'm a floater, so I do whatever I feel like doing at the moment. Right now, it's YouTube. Who knows where that'll take me? Maybe something else. I don't know. So I'm gonna go with the flow type person. But whatever he's doing, I'm gonna be right by his side. You are not a but go with the flow type person. I am you a just go with said the five minutes. Five minutes ago that you have to plan things out and I'm more of a go with the flow type person. No, no. no. So now so now you are. I just I just wanna know. No, no, this is different though. No, 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 wait, yeah. This is different, uh. this is different. When it comes to life, I know I can't plan everything out because my plans never go the way I want them to. That's different. I mean like with little things that I can actually control. I can't control where my life is going because it's not just me, it's not just about me. Once you have kids and stuff, all that stuff goes out the window, so. What made you decide to get married at such a young age? I believe if you're dating for someone, especially long distance, for too long, you wasting a lot of time. So just let me tell you how my life worked out, right? So we were dating long distance, right? And every other month or so, I would go visit her and maybe twice a year she came visit me. Well, that's a lot of money that's coming out of my pocket. I'm, exactly. I'm just being honest. When you have an investment, when you invest in something, mm -hmm. you don't just put money into it and not expect anything in return. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm saying something right now. He's saying and something. And I want you to tune in, okay? After spending thousands of dollars throughout the year <laughs> visiting her. No, it's, it is thousands, real though. Dollars. Seriously. I mean, I had to get my own hotel. I had to rent a car. Hotel. I had to pay car. for everything that we did. Mm -hmm. So I think it's stupid to date someone just to date. If marriage isn't the goal, why even consider yourself boyfriend and girlfriend? Or At the end of the day, well. there has to be some sort of ultimate commitment. Because if you're always dating, then you always one of you always has that option to, to leave. If you love someone, then you're taking a picture. Um, if you love someone, then you're going to want to be with them for the rest of your life. Like I don't see why that's so hard to understand just because we're 20, I'm 22 and he's 24. Like What difference does that make? At the same time, I think, but like if you are old enough to have your own home and pay your own bills and take care of yourself then you're old enough to get married you know and if you really really love that person you'll want to experience life with them you know i've experienced a lot of firsts with cameron and that's big for me because i didn't i don't want to just share all of my experiences with temporary people because then i'm going through life regretting all of the cool things that I could have done with somebody who I really cared about, who really cared about me and really was there for me, you know what I mean? And we support each other. So it's not like I don't have an option now, I have to just be a housewife. Like, no, I mean, he supports me in everything that I do and vice versa. He will make it like, oh, you're trapped with that person and you have to, you can't do what you want to do and all this stuff like that. Like, 
man, please, whatever. Like, this is fun. I don't care what anybody says. I think that getting married young is actually a lot more fun than getting married when you're like 30 or 40 and you've been with 10 other people, 20 other people, a million other people. You've given so much of yourself to all these people that are no longer in your life. That sucks. Like, I would never want to look back on life and be tired. Get what I'm saying? Yep. What are you doing? It stops every 12 minutes. Wow, you're really smart. You sit there. Wait. Oh! Okay, we're good now. We're good. Piggybacking off that. Uh, how how did we know we were ready to get married? That was a, that's a good question. How do you know when you're ready? That's a good question. People always say, and this is this is this is cliche, but it's not at the same time. You know when you're ready because you just know. I'm gonna be honest with you all. I had a breakdown. Um, we both did. So I, I was supposed to originally ask her to marry me on her birthday, but I ended up panicking and freaking out um, because I thought I wasn't ready. You know, you, you have you have doubt, you have fear, you man, can I really do this? Like is this is this really gonna happen? Hey, I don't have enough money saved up and I don't have this in place yet and I don't have this in place yet. I, I think I actually needed that to kinda help me, you know, stop being so faithless and you know, putting certain things into perspective that, you know, wow, this is real. I am about to grow up, I am about to be a man, I am going to have full responsibilities. I'm, I am going to have to pay for my own bills. I am going to have to take care of a woman. I am going to have to, you know, take care of the house and make sure she feels safe, secure, and all that jazz. But when, when I eventually did end up asking her to marry me five months later, I just knew. You know, I had, I had prayed about it. I had talked to her dad about it. I talked to my dad about it. You love this person. If you really feel without a doubt that you are ready to spend the rest of your life with this person, then go for it. Like, why not? There's like a calmness that comes over you. And that's that's what happened to me. I don't know if anybody else that's gone through this can attest, but. I was never actually ready. Like there was no defining moment for me that was like, oh yeah, I'm ready to get married. Until maybe a month before we actually got married. Because when we got engaged, I was scared because that's when I guess that happened where you had a, your little breakdown or whatever. I was I was nervous too because I felt like, you know, and we had to talk about it and I was like, is this really it? You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't like I was questioning him and my love for him, but it was just like, am I questioning? I was questioning our ability to be together without help, you know, being on our own. Because this was going to be my first experience leaving home. Um, I didn't go off to college or anything. So I was like, scared. And so like, when he asked me, I was like, yes. But then I was like, Oh my god wait oh my god am i really ready but as far as being married and being a wife and taking care of somebody else and having to deal with that all of that just comes with experience um so you just got to get in there and do it because I, I i didn't know if i was ready or not when i got here i knew that i wanted to be with him for the rest of my life and i knew what i wanted to be his wife but i didn't know if i was ready to be a, a wife for real for real until i actually start doing it and i was like oh this isn't that bad. You know, for me, I felt like the only way I would have known if I was ready is if he was ready because, I mean, if he's ready, then, you know, everything I do is just contingent upon him because I'm the help me. As long as you're good, I'm good. This is a good question. Do you feel that there's a level of growth and self-contentment that's harder to get now that you're married and you always have to place someone else's needs before your own? Well, every day we're would, growing. I, yeah, I wouldn't say it's hard to be content because at this point in our lives, like, I can walk in my home and be like, man, I'm blessed. Like, this is, this is awesome. You know, when you're young and you're married or you're newly married, whether you're old and you're newly married or you're young and you're newly married, you're, you're going to be growing together. So you don't want to be content with where you are because you want to say, okay in five years I don't want to have to fight the same battles like I want it to be you know new levels new devils you know what I'm saying but uh, don't judge me not um, for you it may be different for you but for me I won't say that I'm not content because I mean I am content I'm very happy this is like the most happy I've ever been in my life you know I've never really had to because I was not the the woman of the house so I didn't have to take care of my own home and stuff like that 
So now that all of this responsibility has been sprung up on me, it, it's a change. I won't say that it's bad. I won't say that it's hard to be content, but it's definitely an adjustment and I have to get used to worry putting somebody else's needs before my own and worrying about them first that kind of kind of does take a toll on how on how like i feel about myself personally because sometimes i feel like oh i gotta do this i gotta do this i gotta do this that i forget to take care of myself and I, it doesn't like hinder me from growing it's actually helping me to grow in the right direction instead of being so selfish it's helping me to understand somebody else you know so it's not a bad thing but it's definitely a change. It's a good change. Marriage is an opportunity for you to grow together. So, I mean, it's not about just one person anymore. Now it's about both of you. So you both have to grow together. How do you deal with um, negative non-supporter people? Because I do, get, a, I do get, get questions about that a lot. Like people are like, did you have a lot of support when you, get, you were getting married? And how did your family feel about it? And what do you do about people who don't support you? And we didn't really experience a lot of people who didn't support us. It was more just people talking, like saying stuff like, oh, y'all are really young. Are you sure you ready? And all this stuff like that. People are, everybody in the world is going to say that you're young if you're younger than them. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And then the people that are younger than you are going to be like, dang, you got the rest of your life. I mean, you go out and do, have fun. Essentially what they're saying is, Go out, have more sex with other people, um, date around, be a hoe, uh, mess around with all these other people, then get married once you got that all out of the way. That's absolutely ridiculous. It's unrealistic. Okay? It's stupid and it's dumb and it's dangerous. I mean, people got AIDS out here these days. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You might catch Ebola out here and <laughs> mess around like that. Other than that, I mean... People are going to say, oh, people are going to say stuff all other day. than that. But 99% of my family was supportive. They was just like, oh, are you sure? About and 80% of my family. I'm, I'm very definitive when it comes to my love life and my life because That's I live yours. it. God, me and God, we run this. So they can't tell me what to do with, with this. So. Right. I think that's all the questions that we have. Um, I'm trying to think of something else. That's all, else. folks. But yeah, if you have any questions, We'll answer them in the comments. Um, hit us up. Let me let me find the picture. Or you can, uh, you know, hit us up on both of our Instagrams, Twitters. I need more followers on Twitter, guys. Really, I'll be content with a thousand. Um, I'm currently at 922 right now, and I've been actually tweeting a lot more. She says I don't tweet, so um, I'm gonna be tweeting a lot more. It's gonna be a lot of motivational things and sports. So. <laughs> At Cameron J. What is this? A commercial? What are you trying to do? Oh. But um, thank you guys for watching. Um, thank you guys for being so supportive. I think. Oh, we just hit two hundred thousand on our wedding video, which is crazy to me um, that that many people have watched it. But thank you guys for being awesome because you're awesome. I really think it's super dope that all of you guys like love us and look up to us some of you that do really awesome we really we really think it's an honor that was my whole purpose for life with the logans is showing people that you could be young saved and married and still have fun um and you know thank you guys for loving my friends and showing them love and uh you know those of you that don't understand certain people you just don't understand them because we only show you a certain glimpse. Thank you guys. Keep tuning in this week's episode. Watch Life with the Logans. I'll um, link. Or is it this week? Or is it, I don't know when this video is going up. But the the latest Life with the Logans episodes, we're going to teach you how to make the bomb <laughs> tacos. It'll be this week. I'll put it up. Bomb tacos. Shout out to Taylor K. You're right. Twin couple. Boy Orlando. Um, our twin couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, yes. I think that's it. Um, BTB. I just want to say that, I don't know, this has been really cool. It's an amazing journey. I've been really blessed to experience this and to share it with you guys. Um, a lot of you have been watching me since 2010, which is crazy. Before I met him, well, when I met him. Y'all didn't know I met him, but anyway. Um, but yeah, 
We've grown a lot and marriage is cool. Don't let anybody tell you that it's not cool and that it can't be fun and that it's old fashioned because it's not. Marriage is awesome. And we're here to prove you guys, prove to you guys that that's true. What y'all think about this hair? You don't like it? So guys, on today's episode of Life with the Logan.